Over 100 million people will fill a prescription for level thyroxine this year alone, and many of them, most of them, have no idea how many different things interfere with its function. Why does it matter? Because if you aren't taking it correctly, it's not going to help you feel any better. Most people know they shouldn't be taking their thyroid medication with obvious things like coffee and food, but few understand that this applies to supplements as well. Which is exactly why today we're talking about the supplements that can interfere with thyroid medication so you can ensure you aren't taking any. And number one on this list is biotin. Biotin has a bad reputation among thyroid patients, but most people have no idea what it's actually doing or why it could potentially be a problem. So let's set the record straight. Biotin does not have any impact on thyroid function. However, it can interfere with the accuracy of your thyroid lab tests. If biotin is taken in high doses before you get your labs drawn, it can interfere with the thyroid testing assay and make it look like you have more thyroid hormone in your body than you really do. This means your body will look hyperthyroid or like you're taking too much thyroid medication. But remember, it's not actually impacting your thyroid. But it can become a problem if your doctor looks at those lab test results and makes changes based off of inaccurate information. If they do this, then you may have your thyroid medication reduced, which may result in more symptoms. If you are someone who is taking thyroid medication, then you must be aware of this interaction. Otherwise, you are going to have a bad time. The simple solution to the biotin problem is to simply avoid taking biotin two to three days before you get your labs drawn. And this completely solves the problem. There's no need to avoid biotin completely if you're taking thyroid medication, but you do need to make sure you're using it correctly. Take this opportunity right now to double check the back of the ingredients of any supplements that you're taking right now to see if it has biotin. And if it does, make sure you take this into account by avoiding that particular supplement two to three days before your next lab draw. Number two is caffeine. And let me take the unpopular position here and say that if you are someone who is taking thyroid medication, then you probably should not be taking caffeine at all. This includes coffee, energy drinks, soda, and pretty much anything that contains caffeine. How come? For two main reasons. The first is that caffeine has a stimulatory effect on your intestinal tract, which means if you take it anywhere near the same time that you take your thyroid medication, that medication will spend less time in your gut and less of it will get absorbed. And because caffeine has a half-life of five hours, which means that any single dose will stay in your system for about 25 hours, this effect occurs pretty much no matter what time of day that you take or drink your caffeine. But this isn't the only reason. Caffeine also has a stimulatory effect on adrenal function and cortisol, which has the potential to make thyroid-related fatigue even worse. And if you're not careful, you can get into a cycle where you're reliant upon caffeine for energy, but each dose that you take only serves to hurt your thyroid and cause more fatigue in the long run. This makes managing your dose of thyroid medication far more complicated than it needs to be. For number three, I've combined both iron and calcium together because they both cause the same issue. If either are taken within four hours of your thyroid medication, they can bind to and inactivate it. Depending on how much iron or calcium you're taking, this effect can be as high as 25%. Higher doses cause more binding, which causes more issues. And this nasty effect also occurs if you're eating food that is high in calcium or iron, which is why most thyroid patients are told to take their thyroid medication on an empty stomach. Just be sure to take your thyroid medication four hours away from any food or any supplement that contains either calcium or iron. But don't hear this and make the mistake of assuming that iron or calcium are somehow harmful or should be avoided if you have a thyroid problem. In fact, your body requires iron to make thyroid hormone. And if you are deficient in iron, your body will have a hard time making thyroid hormone, which will then make you more reliant upon thyroid medication. So taking iron, if you need it, is very important. You just have to make sure you're using it the right way. Number four is glucomannan and other supplements that contain fiber. Thyroid patients are big fans of glucomannan because of its beneficial effects on weight, cholesterol, blood sugar, and appetite. These, of course, are some of the biggest symptoms and problems that thyroid patients have to deal with. But the reason it works so well happens to also be the reason that it can impact your thyroid medication. And that is by acting as a sticky glue in your intestinal tract. Not only does it slow down the absorption of sugar, leading to better insulin control and better appetite control, it also has the potential to slow down or delay the absorption of thyroid medication if it's taken too close together. And if this occurs, it will reduce the amount of medication that makes it into your body and your hypothyroid symptoms will be worse. 
But much like iron and calcium, just because it can cause problems doesn't mean that it always has to. You can completely solve this problem and take glucomannan to achieve all those benefits we talked about before, as long as you take it four hours away from whenever you take your thyroid medication. So if you're someone who likes taking your thyroid medication in the morning, you'll be safe to take glucomannan at lunchtime, which means you can enjoy its beneficial effects on controlling your appetite for pretty much the rest of the day. What about fiber? Glucomannan is a soluble fiber, but there are plenty of other fiber supplements that thyroid patients take in order to treat constipation. These include things like Metamucil, Citrusel, Benefiber, and so on. And these fiber supplements can also delay the absorption of thyroid medication, but not quite to the same degree as glucomannan. Studies have shown, for instance, if you were to take your thyroid medication at the exact same time as Metamucil, you'd see a drop in level thyroxine absorption by about 9%. Now this isn't huge, but it is enough to cause problems, which is why you should avoid it. Number five are estrogen enhancing or estrogen supporting supplements. These are supplements which help your body naturally increase estrogen and include things like soy, wild yam, black cohosh, chaseberry, flaxseed, maca, grape, ginseng, and estriol. Many of these are found in supplements that are specifically targeted and marketed towards women. So if you're taking a women's health supplement of any type, there's a good chance that one or more of those ingredients are probably found inside. Now this isn't necessarily or automatically a problem because it is critical for women, especially women with thyroid problems, to have a balanced ratio of estrogen to progesterone. But you should be aware of their impact on thyroid function. Anything that you're taking that will help balance or increase estrogen will have an increase in an enzyme called thyroid binding globulin. And this enzyme is responsible for carrying thyroid hormone throughout your body. Thyroid hormone is too powerful to float around your body without being bound and inactivated, so roughly 99% of it is bound to these proteins like thyroid binding globulin. This leaves less than 1% of thyroid hormone that is available and free to use by your body. When you increase estrogen, you're increasing thyroid binding globulin, which further reduces this 1%. And if not accounted for with adjustments in your medication, you may inadvertently make thyroid function worse. By the way, even though we're talking specifically about supplements, you should also know that medications that either contain estrogen or impact estrogen, like birth control, will have the same effect. When it comes to supplements, it's totally acceptable to accept a change in thyroid function when you're increasing estrogen because of those beneficial effects that estrogen has on the female body but it must be accounted for usually with an increase in thyroid medication dose. The only way to identify that this problem is happening, by the way, is by checking your free thyroid hormones like free T3 and free T4. If you are only looking at your TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone, you will not see the impact or change that these estrogen supplements have on thyroid function. This is yet another reason why it's so important for thyroid patients to get a complete set of thyroid labs. And if you want to learn more about which tests every thyroid patient should get, I'd recommend checking out this video next.